Hi, I'm Deborah Fowler, and I'm going to talk about karma, texture overrides, and look at USDs and husk command very briefly. So to start with, I'm going to create a grid of grids, and we're going to use that to assign textures per object. We'll go ahead. Grid. And maybe a scatter in here. Just do 20 of them. We're going to create this to be a little tile that we can easily assign a texture to. And here we are. Okay, and I want to add some variation to this as well. Attribute randomize. Go down one of those. Actually, let's do a couple. And we will set, leave the color, maybe make the color a little bit different. And then in here, we change the point scale. That's a one dimension value. And change it to be maybe between one and two. Okay, so now we have a setup with some tiles, if you will, that we can put textures on. Um, right now, I'm going to go ahead and pack these, and I'm going to assign a material to this. And in this case, I'm going to start off with the principal shader, because that's an easy transition to uh, using Karma. So we're just going to grab one of the principal shaders, and I'm going to go ahead and change this to be 1. Use pack color, and we're eventually going to use textures. We'll get there. Okay, so there's my principal shader. I'm going to go back and assign that. And in this case, what I want to do is I want to change this to point because I'm going to put an override per object. Now, right now, we can actually render this as it is in Karma. So let's do the easiest way, which is to bring down a lob net. And I'm going to dive inside and do a scene import. And one other thing I want to have is a camera. Leave that out there. Go inside, and now we have everything we need for the scene. Uh, we could also add a Karma render properties so that we can control how big the image is and so on. Let's make it small. And now we go ahead and use our Karma CPU. And you can see that we're getting exactly what you'd expect. Um, this is due to Vulkan. Vulkan is not showing anything right now. Um, Vulkan is not necessarily compatible with principal shader, so we'll get to uh, that in a moment. But you can see that Karma CPU and Karma XPU are actually behaving as you'd expect. Now, Karma CPU respects principal shaders. Karma XPU does not. So, let's continue with this. Let's go ahead and vary the materials on here. So what we want to do is we want to use some textures that I've saved. So let's... Okay, and now what we want to do is override those textures for each object. So I'm going to choose the base color texture right there. And we're going to give it a string that is going to match to the various textures. And inside my texture folder, I have dog 01 through 08, which are different various pictures of my dog. And I'm going to use those to pattern match to grab one of each of those textures and distribute them. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We know they're relative to the hip file, and they're in a text folder and they're labeled dog underscore zero and then a number. So in order to match to that number, we're going to take a random value based on the point number, and then we'll add the dot png ending, but we also need to make this an integer because if we just take rand, if we look in the geometry spreadsheet, we have right now 
is a very odd looking number. So in here, that's not what we need. We need an integer. So we're going to say int. And we also need a value between 1 and 8. So we're going to multiply this by 8. So another thing we can do is we can just take that integer and add 1 to it. And that'll give us a value for various different things. If you want to see if that's truly giving us all, what we can do is we can increase the number of objects substantially. And then we can see that we have our values ranging 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 8. OK, so let's go back to 20. OK, so now I have a valid string. What I need to do is go ahead into my principal shader and turn on this texture so that it actually has something to use. I sometimes put a default just for safety sake. OK, so now I have a texture that's going to be overridden. Let's go ahead and test that in the render view. And we're just going to use Mantra for the moment just to test. And as you can see, we have our little um, textures. They're kind of upside down. Um, they're colored. Perhaps we don't want to do that. Um, and they're all varied. Let's go ahead and put some UVs in here. So we can adjust this. And initialize it. And I'm going to flip them. OK, so there's our texture variation in Mantra. Let's not do Mantra, though. Let's go ahead and do this in Karma. So if we go over to our LOP network, you'll notice that our Houdini Vulcan is working now. But we're not getting the variation in textures. And the reason is that Karma is not finding them. So what we need to do is we need to set up an attribute rather than doing that in the material node. OK. So let's go back into the grid. And rather than doing this expression in here, we're going to move that out to a point wrangle, or an attribute wrangle, if you will. OK, so it's going to run over the points. And what we're going to do is we're going to use very much the same kind of expression right here. I'm going to grab that. And then I'm going to use this as my seed. But I'm going to need to manipulate this a bit. So if I create a number and I use that as my expression here, there we go. And then what I'm going to do is create a string And that's going to be my string here. And then I need to put this into quotes. And then add on integer to ASCII, the number, rather than add expression. and add our .png. So what we've done is just created an attribute here. If I change this, I can also change this. I don't need to use this. Doesn't hurt to have it, but let's go ahead and use. Because that's the attribute that we just created here, base color texture. And so now, let's go back into our lot. And we can see that we have variation on our textures. So as long as that attribute exists, we're fine in CPU. But if we go to XPU, you can see that it's just using the default. All right, so we've got to move to Material X. And Material X is relatively easy to use, but we're going to change our LOP network a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do 
is rather than do a scene import all, I could exclude things, but what I'm going to do instead is just get rid of the scene import all. So we're going to use a SOP import. We'll grab our geometry. And then you can see that we have our geometry back. If I look at this, it's giving me a warning. It's just that it hasn't set a path. It will actually still save it when you write out. It'll save it into ob slash grid one slash copy nodes, copied two points node. But I actually want to set the path myself for two reasons. One, um, I like to put it into a geo folder. And the other is I want to write it as a USDA or an ASCII readable file so that I can show you what it looks like. And that way you can get a better idea of what USD is doing underneath the hood. You don't need to do that, it's just for interest. Okay, next we need a material library. So we need material X. And we're going to dive inside and do a material X builder. Dive inside there. We don't really need the displacements inputs right now. We're going to grab a material X image and plug this into our base color. And then I like to promote this parameter because that's what we're going to be using for our file. And then in here, and right click and expose nodes. And this is our file name. And down here we have default. I'm just going to grab that first default right there. And so we have our file. Uh, we're getting a path which is very long. So instead, let's grab this and change this to hip. It would help if I spelled it. OK. So now we have our path to our, our default uh, parameter. Now, up here, we can autofill our materials, and we could assign the geometry here. But because we're doing a material override, I'm going to do it in an assign material node. And put that in here. Let's just move this out a bit. The other thing we don't have is a camera. So let's go ahead and do a new cam. It's cameras, camera one. So we have our camera, our geometry, and now our materials. And I'm just going to plug that into our network here. In here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the particulars to the object. So I'm doing a material override. What I want to do is give that essentially a wild card. So how do I know this? This is from the uh, scene graph tree. So in here, you can see your scene graph tree is showing our SOP import with all its objects, prototype, and instances. And then we have material X in here. And what we want to do is we want to grab for each one of these objects. So in here, I'm going to say SOP import 1. And then I'm going to use a wild card so that it matches to those instances. And then in here, what I want to do is grab the material path. I could either type it in or just grab it here and drag. So now we're going to do an expression in here, which is our material override. It's going to be very similar to what we did in the point wrangle. So I'm just going to grab that and then go back over into here. And the only thing we really need to change in here is element number. And so that gives us our base color. What we're going to do now is we're going to map those two in to the correct name on our shader. So let me go back into the scene view so we can see what's going on. And we're going to take our attribute name, which is in the shader, which is file, and put our base color into there. And so what that does is binds those two. And if we have done everything correctly and we're displaying this, you'll see that we now have variation on those textures. And we can see it in Vulkan, in Karma CPU, 
and in Karma XPU. If you don't like the ordering or the distribution, you can also change the seed. So if I wanted to, I could multiply by my birthday or something like that. Oops. And then it changes the distribution. So that's just a really easy way of doing material override using Material X. Now I want to look a little bit at USDs very briefly. So rather than having this uh, Karma rendering settings, I'm going to choose to use render settings. And then I'm going to grab a USD ROP. So not a render ROP, but a ROP. And this is going to write out the files that you would need to, for example, uh, put on the farm. In here, um, I'm not going to put that in Geo. I actually want it at the top level. And I'm just going to call this Karma. And it's going to fill in the USD, which is USD ROP, or the operator, which is USD ROP 1, and then USD. And I want to do A so that we can look at it. So normally you'd be doing binary. I'm doing ASCII just so that I can show you. We're going to save that to disk. And then we're going to take a look at that and render it in husk. So if we look at this, let's go ahead and look at what that grid information looks like in USD form. You can see what we have are essentially the SOP import. And then transformations are kept for each instance of the prototype, which is listed here. So it's a very efficient way of doing instancing. So that's the uh, geometry. So let's take a look then at the source file. And here you can see that it's including that sub layer. And we have our camera set. And in here we have materials. And in the materials, it is referencing the various different overrides for the material. So if we go into our specifics, you can see that we're using various different materials throughout the process. Okay, so if we take that file and that file and put that on the farm, that's all we need to do the render. So let's just see what that would look like in Husk. What we're going to do is bring up Houdini's launcher and go in and create a command line tools terminal. And then we're going to cd into our current directory. So let me close this and just grab where we are. Copy that. cd there. And we can take a look at what we've got. We're going to say husk. And then And you can see karma.exr appeared. And if we take a look at that, there we have our image. And let me just go over here. Let's change this to be 320. And let's go ahead and render that again. And bring up our file again and that should go a little faster and we have now our file which is a smaller render and you can see that's consistent with what we're seeing in XPU CPU or the preview Vulkan so that is texture overrides and a little glimpse into Material X as well as Husk and USD. USD is a vast topic, uh, but hopefully that'll give you a little bit of insight into what's going on underneath the hood. Thank you for watching.